Imagine driving through Tonopah, Nevada, USA, and seeing 10,000 mirrors shining around a crescent-shaped dune. You would be amazed by this stunning engineering marvel, the Crescent Dune Solar Energy Plant. But behind the dazzling facade lies a sad story of failure and bankruptcy. The plant's operator gave up on the project in 2020, even though it was one of the largest and most controversial solar thermal power plants in the US. How did this happen? In this video, we will reveal the secrets behind this ambitious but doomed venture. Solar thermal power plants use mirrors to reflect and concentrate sunlight onto a receiver, where it heats up a fluid that drives a turbine to generate electricity. The Crescent Dune plant had a capacity of 110 megawatt. The Crescent Dune plant was not only the first of its kind in the US, but also the world's first commercial solar power plant with a central tower and molten salt energy storage. This innovative technology allowed the plant to store excess heat in a tank of molten salt and use it to produce electricity even when the sun was not shining. The plant was located about 190 miles northwest of Las Vegas, near Tonopah, and was owned and operated by Solar Reserve, a startup energy company founded in 2008 with support from U.S. Renewables Group and United Technologies. The project also received a $737 million loan guarantee from the U.S. government and partnered with Cobra Thermosolar Plants, a Spanish engineering firm. Solar Reserve had high hopes for the Crescent Dune plant. The Crescent Dune plant had a deal with NV Energy, the main electricity provider in Nevada, to sell all its power for 25 years at a rate of $0 and 135 cents per kilowatt hour. This was a good price for a renewable energy source that could provide electricity around the clock. But the project faced many delays and challenges. The construction started in September 2011, but it was paused until the end of 2013 because of extensive testing of the plant systems. The construction resumed in 2014, but it took another year to complete the 110 megawatt plant, which was supposed to power around 75,000 homes. The plant was then handed over to ACS, a subsidiary of Cobra Thermosolar Plants, for operation and maintenance. The project consisted of 10,000 347 heliostats, which are large mirrors that track the sun and reflect its rays onto a central tower. The tower was about 656 feet tall and had a receiver at the top, where molten salt flowed through pipes and got heated by the sun's thermal energy. The molten salt reached temperatures of up to 1,050 degrees Fahrenheit and was stored in a large tank. The hot salt was then pumped to a steam generator where it heated water and created steam that drove a turbine to produce electricity. The cooled salt was then returned to the receiver to be heated again. Each heliostat had 35 mirrors, each measuring 6 x 6 feet, giving a total usable surface area of 1245 square feet. The heliostats were arranged in a circular pattern around the tower, covering an area of about 1,600 acres. The plant was designed to operate for up to 12 hours without sunlight, using the stored heat in the molten salt tank. This way, it could provide reliable and clean energy to the grid, even at night or during cloudy days. The entire complex spanned 700 hectares in size. The plant was expected to generate about 500,000 megawatt hours of electricity per year, enough to power about 43,000 homes and avoid 279,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. It was also supposed to create about 600 jobs during construction and 45 permanent jobs during operation. The plant was hailed as a breakthrough for renewable energy and a boon for the local economy. But things did not go as planned. The plant used a technology called Concentrated Solar Power, CSP, which involved three steps, concentration, collection, and conversion. The concentration step used the heliostats to reflect and focus the sunlight onto the tower. The collection step used the pipes on the tower to heat up the molten salt. The conversion step used the heat exchangers to turn the hot salt into steam and power a turbine. The plant also had a storage system that allowed it to use the molten salt as a battery. 
The salt could store excess heat and release it later, when the sun was not shining. This way, the plant could provide electricity for up to 10 hours without any sunlight. The plant did not need any backup fossil fuels, such as natural gas, to run. The plant had 70 million pounds of molten salt, which took two months to melt. Once melted, the salt stayed liquid for the life of the plant and was reheated by cycling through the receiver. The plant finished construction in February 2014 and entered the commissioning phase, where it had to undergo testing and fine-tuning before becoming fully operational. But this phase proved to be more challenging and time-consuming than expected. The plant started operations in September 2015, but it faced many problems and setbacks. In October 2016, it had to shut down because of a leak in the molten salt tank. The owners blamed the engineering firm for faulty foundations and demanded repairs. The plant reopened in July 2017 after several meetings with the Department of Energy and its engineer. But by then, the plant was already losing its competitive edge. Solar energy was becoming cheaper and more efficient, while the plant was costly and complex to maintain. It needed custom parts and a large staff to keep it running smoothly. The plant also had a steep learning curve. It usually takes four years for a new thermal power plant to reach full production, with gradual increases in output each year. The plant was supposed to follow this trajectory, but the tank breakdown in 2016 delayed its progress. The plant had a brief period of good performance in early 2019, but it soon ran into more technical issues and had to shut down again in April. The plant failed to meet its contractual obligations to end the energy. Its only customer, who cancelled the power purchase agreement in October 2019. This was a huge blow for the project, which depended on the revenue from Envy Energy to repay its loan and cover its expenses. The power company said that the project was too risky and unreliable, and that it did not have enough backup resources or new renewable projects to make up for the shortfall. The power company also said that the electricity from the plant was too expensive compared to the much cheaper solar farms that used photovoltaic panels to convert sunlight directly into electricity. The plant was not only a financial failure, but also an environmental disaster. The intense heat from the mirrors killed and burned many birds that flew over the area. The workers also suffered from exposure to nitrogen dioxide, a toxic gas that leaked from the molten salt tanks. The plant's owner, Solar Reserve, tried to hide its troubles and took down its website. The plant's status was unclear for a while, as the parties involved sought legal solutions. But in the end, Solar Reserve filed for bankruptcy, blaming the Department of Energy. The Department of Energy had lent $737 million to the project and had the right to take over the plant if it defaulted on its payments. Solar Reserve claimed that the Department of Energy violated its agreement and took control of the plant's owner, Tanapa Solar, by appointing new directors to its board. Solar Reserve said that this prevented it from having a say in the plant's decisions, such as filing for bankruptcy. The blame game continued, with different parties accusing each other of causing the plant's failure. AC Cobra, the engineering firm, was blamed for the delayed construction and the faulty design of the molten salt tank. The Department of Energy managed to recover $200 million from the bankruptcy case and transferred the operational control of the plant to Cobra Thermosolar, which was previously a partner in the project. The plant was closed for a long time without any maintenance and needed to be repaired and restarted. The turbine was fixed and synchronized with the steam generator, and the power production resumed on July 17, 2021. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed learning about this fascinating but troubled solar power plant. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.